What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the HQ. This is Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football. I got a box in the way of my brand. Unfortunately, I'm horrible at marketing, but we have Dr. Jesse Morse back on the channel of the Fantasy Doctors. Welcome back, Doc. Um, glad to have you. And I see that you switched up the style a little bit because, you know, listen, people, the man's a doctor, whether he has a goddamn hat on or whether he doesn't have a hat on. All right. <laughs> show, show some damn respect. What's I up? wear friggin' a suit and tie six days a week. <laughs> I'm gonna make you wear. I'm gonna make you wear a suit and tie when you come back on the channel throughout the week. I, I recorded my Fantasy Doctors podcast the other day with a hat on and a bow tie. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, you're a big bow tie guy, aren't you? I I I got about 150 ties. Jeez. I mean, I wear. I've been wearing. I wear them every day for the past like 10 years. So that's true. Just yeah. switch them out. Not a big tie guy, more of a, a plain black shirt every single day guy. <laughs> That's how we that. I wear those underneath my shirt. Okay. Or white, you know, depending on the color of the shirt. Yeah, I might start dressing up more business savvy throughout the day to make it pretend like I'm doing something important. <laughs> let's, let's actually do something important. Let's talk about some of the injuries that are occurring around the NFL right now. Some serious, some not serious. We've had uh, a few big ones that hit us throughout the weekend, along with Andrew Luck's retiring. But we're going to talk only about injuries today and players that you should target or avoid or maybe you can get them at value due to the injuries in 2019 fantasy football. And we're going to start off with Odell Beckham Jr., wide receiver of the Cleveland Browns. Now, we did not talk about him last week when you came on. He was dealing with some type of hip pointer injury. And I believe Freddie Kitchen said at the time, if it was regular season, he would have pushed him. But obviously, they have, you know, two weeks before – um, the season kicks off, so no need to play him in the preseason games, no need to push him at practice or whatever, with a hit pointer. Um, now, this is – let's explain, I guess, what this type of injury is that OBJ is dealing with. Uh, is it something that lingers? Is it, you know, uh, what, what's a typical recovery timetable for this? So, hit pointer is like the best-case scenario for a hip injury. Okay. Um, if you think of someone like – running into your the side of the top of your hip either right or left whatever mm. um and, and and think of the, the top of the hip bone coming here uh you hitting it that's basically a bruise of the hip hip kind of bone but also the the tissues and, and the muscles on top of that so uh like every other part it takes a couple weeks there's a couple nerves that run by it that sometimes can be a little irritated uh typical rule of thumb for a hip pointer is one to two weeks Okay, so so this nothing scary, really man. concerning. Most guys can continue to play. Sometimes they'll put a little extra padding over it. Um, to give you an, a, an idea of how concerned I am about OBJ this year, I uh, drafted him in the first round of, uh, of one of the best ball, $25 to win a million yeah. price. So not worried at all. He's, he has potential to be the number one wide receiver. He, at worst, as long as he stays healthy, is like a number five or six, like – yeah, for sure. Okay, so that's good news. We're not concerned with OBJ. You could still safely pick him end of first round, early second round, whatever. Uh, a player that has fallen quickly down draft boards, um, some of it due to a terrible offense, some of it due to a running back by committee, um, but certainly due to this news that he is in a walking boot, which I believe he shed um, this weekend, and that is Kenyon Drake, running back of the Miami Dolphins. Now, um, you know, again, walking boots are very precautionary, um, but they can be precautionary, right? They don't have to be serious. It sounds more serious than, yeah. um, than what a lot of the injuries actually happen to be. We knew Derrick Henry was dealing with this calf strain for uh, about a month that he was in a walking boot for a while. Kenyon Drake shed his walking boot. Do you have any more of the inner workings on, on what we have with Kenyon Drake? Unfortunately, we really don't. They haven't told us anything, and if they did, I haven't caught it. I haven't, and I, I read a lot of different sources every day if I can find it. Still, no comments. Um, here's the problem with with Drake and Bellage. Um, I really don't want anything to do with the Dolphins this year. I don't know what to expect of this offense. There's word that still, uh, Stills may even be cut. They don't even know who's going to start at quarterback. They both looked half decent. Um, Balage is great running in space, but man, he cannot create a, a lane to save his life. Uh, yeah. Drake is probably going to be out. I wouldn't be surprised if he's out for a couple of weeks into the regular season. The problem is I, it's hard to speculate if I don't even know what body part we're talking about. Is yeah, it I foot? Mean, is it I, ankle? I, I believe no. it's a foot because the Dolphins coach, uh, Brian Flores came out and, uh, he said that Kenyon Drake's foot injury 
will take a while to heal. And that was on August 14th. So that was about a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, so we know it's a foot. And the fact that the coach kind of came out and said, like, it's going to take a while to heal. It's not one of those things where it's, oh, you know, he's day to day. If it was regular season, he'd be out there. So it seems to me that, yeah, I would definitely be concerned with Drake's um, Drake's foot. It was good to see, obviously, that he shed the walking boot. Um, so, I mean, I guess I would rather be pessimistic about the situation. Again, we don't want to draft players that are injured, especially we don't know the severity of the injury. So is Drake pretty much off your board at this point? Yeah, everybody uh, on the Dolphins, except for maybe uh, Preston Williams, is probably the only guy that I'll shoot deep for. Um, a lot of my buddies, because I, I went to undergrad in South Florida, so a lot of my uh, buddies are big Dolphin fans, so they have a tendency to draft uh, higher than their ADT as, as a result. It's a beautiful um, I don't want, I don't want either. I, even in best ball, I think I got Balazs once, and and that's really the only time uh, that he's been going like they've been going like the seventh, eighth round. They both um, started, yeah, they both started creeping up. Drake was like a fifth round pick, and Balazs was like an eighth or ninth round pick. I'm like, how are you going to invest two top eight picks in a backfield that's about to produce like four rushing touchdowns between the fucking two of them? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I. I I just don't see how they win more than like four or five games. There may be some garbage time in there. Yeah. Um, if this is a midfoot sprain, which is what we'll talk about a little bit with Cam, um, those can be, depending on the severity, those can be anywhere from one to two weeks to like six to eight weeks. I mean, uh, that's basically the, the middle of your foot that forms the arch. So, uh, and obviously he needs that in order to run and he's at be a high risk injury for re injuring it. So he really needs to make sure that this is healed. Um, uh, this is probably not a Liz Frank, which is a very important uh, complex in, in, in the same area uh, mm -hmm. because they probably would have told us, but maybe not. Um, I, I, these these things just worry me. Think of A.J. Green last year who ended up having a toe that came back and then he had it, uh, had it um, surgically addressed. Um, these things don't have a tendency to, to, to do well. Uh, ankle sprains aren't a big deal, but if this is a foot sprain, different beast, uh, I'm avoiding him. Okay, cool. Now let's just roll right into Cam Newton because you're already kind of on the subject now. He has been diagnosed with a mid-foot sprain. The Panthers are cautiously optimistic that he'll be ready for the week one opener. And there was a report that came out today. According to Jordan Rodriguez of The Athletic, uh, Cam Newton is expected to return to practice in some capacity on Monday. Um, now you said that the timetable is obviously not, you know, 24 hours after spraining your foot. Um, this seems like Cam might be pushing it a little early. So what's your takeaway from this? So a um, couple reasons I'm concerned, a little bit concerned about Cam. First of all, as we just talked about with Drake, this is basically the same injury. Uh, Cam is a runner indirectly. He's mobile and that helps him. Um, and the look who the um, – Look who the – I just drew a blank. Uh, Panthers are playing in week one. It's the Rams, right? So, who other <clears throat> other than Aaron Donald – I know where this is going, yeah. <laughs> – coming at you full speed like 50 times because the guy has a ridiculous motor in the first game of the season, uh, and he's trying to – and Cam's trying to run for his life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Either he's going to come back too soon and he's going to re-injure it. They're going to shut him down for the first week and have him avoid him. Mm -hmm. I just – I don't like where this is going. He's going a little too high for um, for, for my liking. Okay. I like his shoulder. I'm really not concerned about his shoulder. I know. That's so uh, disappointing because, it, yeah. like, you know, he's clearly healed from the shoulder and you're excited about drafting Cam in fantasy again, and then this shit happens. And now I'm like – I, you know, I don't want a Cam Newton who's hindered by his foot who can't really run because I don't give a shit about his passing upside. His passing upside, you know, he hit it during the MVP year, but typically he's not a high-volume passer. So it's like if he is not, you know, at least rushing the ball volume-wise at like 75% of what he normally does, he's just not fantasy football Cam Newton, you know? Yeah, I mean, give me Lamar uh, Jackson several rounds later with higher rushing upside. Yeah, for sure. Now, so so Cam is like in that group of, of mixed quarterbacks, you know, it might be like that kind of like the second ish tier. Maybe it's, you know, uh, Carson Wentz, Cam Newton, guys like that um, who are not in the elite tier, but they're right there. They're, they're amongst the first quarterbacks to go typically after the elite ones go. 
Now, does this this does push Cam Newton down your board? Oh yeah. So, um, I had Cam before this injury in about the five six range, believe it or not. So so uh, anybody who wants to see my board, I just released um, it, it, for the rest of the draft season on our Patreon page. Only five dollars for our our tiers and our draft guide, which is basically tier by uh, tier by tier, round by round of who I like and who I don't like uh, after injuries, after luck, and everything. Um, he was basically, it was Mahomes, Watson, which is pretty consistent with everybody. Then, and then it was basically, for me, it was Matt Ryan, Baker Mayfield, Aaron Rodgers, and Cam Newton. Uh, Cam Newton kind of, I mean, luck was in there, but obviously he's gone now. But the problem is, RIP. Damn. that's the, the, the Cam Newton that we had, I'm still a little concerned about. Uh, this isn't a, a significant injury, but it could be a significant injury if he doesn't allow it to properly heal. Right. Um, so that you've got guys with like, like Jameis who potentially has a, a, a really good arsenal this year. You know, golf is kind of underrated. Uh, Russell Wilson's going to have to pass a lot more because of uh, how poor their defense is going to be and, and injury wise. Um, so those are guys that I'd probably consider taking before cam. So basically someone's probably going to take cam before me Okay. because of that. So, yeah, so you're saying that this probably there, – there's a very good chance that this foot issue maybe causes another uh, issue if he if he comes back too early and something that could linger the entire year and eventually, worst-case scenario, you know, shut him down eventually for one reason or another. Yeah, I mean, thankfully he did not have enough ax- – what we call axial load, so basically the, the, the foot pounding into the ground with someone hitting behind. He didn't have that, so that's why he didn't have a significant injury. Okay. He had the boot on, but that's predominantly to help with swelling. Uh, but but the nature of his position, the nature of how he plays, and the fact that they're playing the Rams in the first week is pause for concern. I know it's only one week. Yeah. Um, I will get exposure to him through McCaffrey if it's, he's available. I love DJ Moore. I love Samuel this year. Uh, so I will probably try to get one of those three if possible, and I'll get my exposure there. I'm, I'm, I think I'm just going to avoid Cam uh, as a result, not because of the shoulder or, you know, the shoulder arm situation but more so because of the foot um and i just like other guys that who are similar upside but less risk okay makes sense um let's talk about mike evans now mike evans has arguably top three fantasy upside because he was doing that prior to deshaun jackson being in the house now deshaun jackson's gone adam humphrey's gone Mm -hmm. uh winston's looked good this preseason chris godwin's obviously looked good mike evans is nursing some kind of quad injury, I believe. Um, he's not going to be playing at all for the rest of the preseason. He's been shut down pretty much. Um, I am not really sure the significance of the injury. I, I don't think it's serious. Um, I think it might just be a bruise or something that he needs to kind of let sit on. Um, do you have any more details on the Mike Evans situation? So there's been some speculation that this isn't a quad at all. This is actually a groin. Ooh. Um, why is this so vague? Well, if you think of look, look down at your thigh. And if you look at the middle of your thigh to, towards the outside, the, the lateral aspect of it, okay. that's your quad. If you look at the middle inside, that's your groin. Okay. So technically, people say if they don't know any better, they say that's, that's thigh. It could be both. I mean, he very well could have an injury to the groin and to the thigh. Okay. Soft t- tissue injuries can linger groin injuries are notorious to linger uh and and they don't have a tendency to heal or well so they scar which is not good because it doesn't allow for it with that being said i'm surprisingly not concerned with him okay. um and i took him early this morning at the turn uh he was i don't know somewhere in the early second uh round so he's like one of my last um, wide receiver ones that yeah. I am actually confident in. T.Y. Hilton's off the board. Um, I don't really know what to make of uh, of, of Allen, uh, Keenan Allen, with his you know foot injury, ankle injury, uh, with Hunter Henry coming back. So it's like I, I'm still comfortable with with Evans. I think they have a, a shot to be a p- potentially sneaky offense this year. Um, I mean, I'd still take guys like Thomas and Hill and, and Juju over him, Julio. Yeah. Julio. Um, the you know you're I'm in the range of like Antonio Brown who I really don't want anything to do with yep. uh, Brandon Cooks I may even consider taking uh, over uh, Brown uh, because he's 
just super underrated and does thousand yard seasons and he's in a potent offense yeah. uh, and I don't have to deal with this drama like you do with Brown. So right. Evans is in that discussion. I'm not overly concerned about his groin. I think they're going to be smart and he's going to play in week one. He's a big dude. He's got good hands and Jameis, I think finally got his act together and Fitz magic is moved South closer to me uh, and, and not breathing down his neck between Godwin um, uh, um, Howard and Evans. I think, I think they have a chance to, to be sneaky this year. Yeah, the statistics should definitely be there from a passing standpoint. Evans, for me, too, is in that. It's like after those, like, six or seven, whatever, like, real elite fantasy wide receivers, I do I do rankings by tiers in my draft guide, and it's literally, like, I, th- I think I might have, like, three of the top guys in its year, and then the next four there, and then Mike Evans in its year by himself. Because he's, like, he's right there, but I'm not putting him in the elite status yet. But he's also, I would much, much rather. He, he's, he's basically the only wide receiver I like at the end of the second round that you could still get because all those other ones go pretty early. Yep. But like, I won't take Antonio Brown where Mike Evans is going. No way. Obviously, no more T.Y. Hilton. Um, I like Thielen a lot now after seeing them um, run this preseason. Him and Kirk Cousins have had a ridiculous connection so far. I think they're going to play really well. I like Keenan Allen because from what I know, he's he's been back in practice, so it seems like he's healthy and ready to roll. But with Melvin Gordon out for eight weeks, I do think that they're going to throw the ball a lot more. So I think Keenan is actually a sneaky bet to – um, creep up and, and, you know, secure that, like, top five fantasy status that he had going for a little while. So, yeah, I like Evans. Good that we don't really need to be concerned. Now, there's another receiver who we were very concerned about, but maybe, like you said on Twitter, he is the exception, not the rule. And that is 30 – I don't even know how old this dude is anymore. Emmanuel Sanders. You know it's funny? Like, in reality, he's probably, like, 30 years old. Like, right now, yeah. just the prime of his life, not old whatsoever, but it seems like he's, like, eight shit at this point. Oh, football years, he's old as hell. So old, I know. It's, it's like ridiculous. And he's coming back from a torn Achilles. Correct. Um, and that is just a, that is just a, a killer in, in the football world. Yep. But it doesn't seem like that's the case for Emmanuel Sanders because he's played in the preseason and he has looked good. They're, they're giving him – like they're clearly confident in him being 100% because they're giving him wide receiver end arounds where he's – you know, he needs to be agile and cut and all this and he's getting uh, deep passes down the field. So, like oh, – yeah. Where are we standing on Sanders right now? I am utterly impressed with his rehab. Both him and Demarius Thomas both basically suffered the same injury, pretty similar in, 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 in timing for, for when it happened. Sanders additionally had a procedure on his other foot um, that was kind of mumbled out and it really hasn't been discussed. So he doesn't really have a good foot to stand on, so to speak. Um. For whatever reason, whether it's he's genetically gifted like an Adrian Peterson, whether they finally turned a corner in the, in the, in the new approach for Achilles tendon repair, which is called the PARS r- repair, um, maybe this guy is just, you know, gifted and he's, he's able to turn it on and off like some guys just can't do. Mm-hmm. Um, but whatever reason, he looks good. I can't deny it. Uh, I don't know how much he's going to hold up. Um, I really don't want anything to do with Flacco. Yeah. Um, I think Sutton is probably the wide receiver one there. I think Hamilton is kind of a sneaky two or three. He's like a younger version of Emmanuel Sanders, if you think of it that way, or at least in my head I do. I think they want to run the ball. I mean, if you can get Emmanuel Sanders in like the ninth, 10th, 11th round as like your wide receiver four or five, I think you can do worse. I think someone's going to reach from earlier, and I just yeah. – He's a little too risky for me at that. Um, I, I prefer someone who's the clear-cut wide receiver one on a team that likes to pass the ball or, um, a, a, you know, a, a team that's going to be down a lot and, and, and have to sling the ball like a, a Jaron Brown or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just – I don't think I'm having any, uh, Sanders on any league because he's going so early for my risk evaluation – that I, I, just, I just don't it's, – it's not worth it for me at that level. He, if he surprises me, great. He's the exception. But I don't like betting on exceptions. I, I bet on the rule. And if there's an exception, so be it. Yeah, you'll be okay missing out on it. I'm the same way. I won't be drafting Emmanuel Sanders this year anywhere. Um, I, he was exploding last year. But like you said, I don't like the situation whatsoever there. Uh, Passing-wise, it's just it, – you're not going to get consistency. We're not going to get the stats out of Flacco. Um, he's also like Case Keenum targeted the slot at an outrageous rate last year. And that's where Sanders was playing. And who knows, does Sanders run more outside this year? Does he give up the slot to Deshaun Hamilton? Um, there's a, there's a lot more factors. I feel like I play for Sanders. Also, obviously you have to add in the 
the injury, right? Yes, he's played, but it doesn't mean that he's fully ready to go and that is completely behind him. Like, there are still issues and rehab processes to this because it's a long timeline to return. So, yeah, Sanders is definitely still nothing more than, like, a, a late-round flyer for me. I'm not going to be jumping up into the single-digit rounds of drafting because they're always still – very good, high upside, younger players still on the board when you would have to take a guy like Sanders. Here's a good uh, question for you. John Brown or Emmanuel Sanders? Uh, that is a very good question. Both those guys are late round guys. I'll, I'll probably still roll with John Brown. I think that his skill set uh, fits with Josh Allen's well. I don't think that kid's I, got a gun and he scrambles like you can't believe. That's why, yeah. Like, I, I mean, he's not accurate still. I don't think he's going to be throwing the ball at a great rate. Yeah. But uh, he takes his shots down the field. Last year, he led the NFL in terms of percentage of his throws that were deep passes. He threw the ball deep, yeah. like 19.5% of his throws. So, like, let John Brown get three or four deep balls a game, and eventually they're going to connect and, and, and make yeah. some I think I think that he's a better a best ball than, like, season long because you don't know really when you're going to sit start him. Yeah. Uh, but Or a really deep league where you have, like, two or three flexes in addition to three wide receivers, and then you kind of throw them on at the end. But um, – there's worse options uh, at that range. Yeah. Um, I think uh, John Brown has higher upside uh, due to due to Sanders' injury concerns. That's all. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I probably won't be taking Brown in, in season long leagues because he's just he, he's like a pass catch uh, pass catching back, but at the wide receiver position where it's like you don't really know what what you're going to get or when you're going to get anything from him. Yeah, exactly. Uh, last guy up on this list is DK Metcalf. Now. He is a rookie wide receiver, polarizing, of course. He's dealt with a few injuries already. He had, uh, I believe it was like an oblique strain, which caused him to miss mm -hmm. some time of practice. And now he is dealing with some sort of knee issue. And they're saying, you know, anytime you hear a player is getting like surgery or they're going in to work on it, um, it gets, it's kind of scary, especially at this point in the off season where we're a week, two weeks out from the NFL kickoff. Um, now, for what's going on with Metcalf's knee, is it was it a knee scope? Do we know more about what's going on? So the description of the injury, of how it happened, of the timeline, and how quickly he's going to return means that he likely suffered an acute meniscal tear. Uh, think Sony Michelle when I say that. Oh. Um, and basically, he needs uh, the so. Uh, let me break step back and kind of this is what I tell my patients every day so I can like visualize it so think of uh, the upper and lower leg bone like this and then you have your meniscus which is your cartilage in between so think of that as, as a piece of paper I'll use this napkin so what happens is uh, this is the thing that allows uh, you to do all these crazy movements of your foot and still function and have power and, and agility well what can happen is you can tear that that meniscus so now instead of being nice and flat, you have a piece that is kind of flapped up like that. Okay. So if you're lucky, it will flap back down and be happy. But the problem is these guys need to run and cut on a dime. And when, when this happens, you need to take at least three to four weeks off if you're lucky. They, these guys don't have that luxury. So what happens is they're gonna have to go in and, and trim out this little piece um, and, and, and to make it kind of smooth uh, so that thing is not flapping in, in, in inside the knee. So this is one of the reasons why Todd Gurley has bad arthritis is because he likely had a meniscal tear as well because it's very highly correlated with an ACL tear. Mm -hmm. um, you remove some of the meniscus, but now there's no uh, absorber in between those two bones. So it's almost like um, if, if you're driving a car and, and three of the wheels have shocks and one of them doesn't, that one of them that doesn't is that part of the knee that doesn't have a meniscus. So the shocks are going to bang, 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 and the rest, of the, uh, the rest of the rims are like, oh, I'm fine. That's the problem is that that one is going to take the majority of the beating and you're going to have a lot more wear and tear in that aspect of the knee. So uh, you can calm these down with a knee scope. If he wasn't a professional athlete, we probably would have put a cortisone injection and rehab them for a couple of weeks. If he still doesn't do well, then you do an e-scope. But he needs to get back quickly, uh, like Sony Michelle did last year, and they will do an e-scope. Uh, if this was a lineman, he'd be back in maybe two weeks sometimes because they don't, they're not really moving a ton. Yeah. Position players need to be able to push hard, cut. Um, anybody who's ever, who's ever had a knee scope, a knee arthroscopy, 
can can tell you that even after a couple of weeks post surgical, they still don't feel right. So imagine trying to push yourself hard and cut on the dime. And this is a, a high level player who they're going to probably need for several years, given the f- fact they yeah. drafted them very high. It would be silly to bring them back in week one or week two. Like um, you want them for the long haul, not just for three or four games, and then you know that puts an increased risk for another injury or a worsening tear of that meniscus. So. When I heard that, I'm not overly concerned about him right now, but I, I, I back off enough because I'm not a big fan of rookie wide receivers in general um, right. for the first year. Uh, so I, that's why I'm so high on Lockett. That's why I'm so high on Jaron Brown, especially since David Moore went out with a, a potentially significant shoulder injury. That's most of their depth at wide receiver. So you basically got Carson, Penny, uh, Lockett, Jaron Brown and then and then Disley if he if he if he can show anything after his patellar tendon tear so it's like they're going to be down they lost a lot of guys big name guys they're going to have to throw the ball I know they want to run the ball but if you're down three touchdowns running is not going to cut it so they're going to hit you know so I'm avoiding Metcalf in dynasty eh, maybe if you get him later but this year uh, I uh, he's too high risk for me yeah, I mean, I, there's no way that I was going to be taking him in season long. Even prior to this, I probably didn't want it. But like you said, Moore's hurt. Now Metcalf likely misses a game or two or whatever. The problem with a guy like Metcalf or any fantasy player in general is like if they're already a late round pick, if they're a guy you get in the 12th, 13th, 14th round and they're going to miss time in the beginning of the season or start off slow, they're going to be the first guy you cut. So yep. it's almost like you, you, there's no reason to even draft them because you already know what's going to happen over the first couple of weeks. So. Um, with Metcalf, um, him going out, right, it, it opens probably more up for Tyler Lockett. I don't know. I, like, I really don't know what their wide receiver depth is behind uh, Lockett, Jerome Brown, if Moore is out. And now it's like um, this makes me love Lockett more. I just uh, – I did a 12-team draft this weekend. I had my first season-long draft, and I grabbed Lockett in the fifth round. And then I grabbed Russell Wilson because it's super flex in the sixth round after that. Or it might have even been the seventh round, to be honest. And I'm not a, I'm not very high on Wilson. I've said this before that like the Vegas odds has Russell Wilson's over under for passing yards at 3600, which is yeah. such a low number. And he's always been super efficient. So like yeah. some players are just good at football, and he'll be able to put up the numbers. Uh, but he'll get it done somehow. But it's like at some point, you know, um, he's gonna need some more weapons. They're gonna end up fucking bringing back Brandon Marshall and working him out again or something like that. They'll probably start <laughs> signing veterans um, to shore up those holes. So. I think this is an upgrade for Tyler Lockett. I do think it's a downgrade for Russell Wilson because I'm, mm. I'm not too like high on Metcalf as a prospect, but he is a field stretcher. Uh, you know, like he's someone that Russell Wilson could scramble away from the line for and then hit him deep on a, on a deep pass or whatever and connect on you know four or five of those a year. And just that itself will you know pan on some some more stats for Wilson. So it makes me a little bit more nervous about Russ to be honest. Here's their. I'm looking at uh, their wide receiver depth chart right now. So you have uh, the aforementioned Tyler Lockett, David Moore, who's injured, and Jaron Brown. Then you have DK Metcalf, uh, mm-hmm. who's, uh, as we said, injured. And then you have guys by the name of Malik Turner, Keenan Reynolds, Terry Wright. Uh, you've probably heard of Amara Darbo, Darboa, however you pronounce it. <laughs> Gary Jennings, who I've heard a little bit of buzz about. Jazz Ferguson and John Ushria. Yikes. Anybody, unless you're like a really – deep and analyst anybody know any of those people yeah i mean i know i know jazz ferguson i've heard the name only because i do follow in dynasty uh jazz ferguson is huge he's like 6'5 225 230 runs a 4 4 5 40 yard dash so his speed score is like really 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 high um but he went to northwestern state and he was undrafted um so it's it's like a hypothetical upside talent you know raw kind of thing so yeah. it's possible that we see him kind of um I think- Jump yeah, up. I think Jennings may be the only one I've heard a little buzz about him, I think, from the preseason. But yeah. uh, it's a, a little, little concerning. They're starting to get thin. Yeah, just given the passing volume that we're going to see in Seattle and now the lack of weapons, it definitely gets concerning. So it should be interesting to see how um, this team kind of bears out. I think those are all the injuries that we had on tap for today, right? Do we have any other uh, major concerns? Uh, no, uh, no one that comes to mind. Uh, everybody else that's it's kind of been injured for a while. Uh, and uh, Jordan Reed uh, suffered another concussion. Um, right. It's the seventh as far as we know. It could be more than that. 
Um, DJ Chark also suffered a concussion, not overly concerning. Lamar Miller, as we know, uh, tore his ACL and likely his MCL last night. I was hoping it was just his MCL, and that was a classic mechanism for that. Unfortunately, the force was enough to be also his ACL. So that's going to send Duke Johnson's uh, ADP skyrocketing, which it already has. He went in the fifth round this morning in the best ball. Um, so, um, and they're probably going to trade for somebody. Uh, and then obviously uh, Andrew Luck's crazy retirement, very respectable uh, given the situation. Uh, and, and just, you know, he couldn't handle it anymore. But that's going to have a significant ripple, ripple down effect on all of the Colts. Uh, not injury related, but might as well be. I mean, indirectly, everybody's going to take a big step down. What are your thoughts on Mac after after Luck? Like, I will. I really liked him coming into the season, but yeah. mm. uh, he is going to. I'm going to have to adjust my rankings after I after I go back on Game Pass and rewatch all the games this weekend. Um, Mac is going to fall dramatically down my draft board of course I know a lot of people are like oh they're gonna run the ball more it's like but they're also not gonna have game script like they would have with luck so it's it's, yeah. it's going to hurt Mac uh fortunately he hasn't been pulled off the field on like third downs this preseason I'm not sure what the case was during this game this weekend's game I didn't I didn't get to to watch it yet but um it looked like he was going to be a three down player and not pulled off for Naeem Hines so I'd like the situation a lot uh I think he probably turns into maybe a fifth rounder, um, maybe in that vicinity. I'll be honest. I mean, I don't, I don't really even like Mac that much as a talent. That was never a reason that I loved him. It's just like yeah, he had a double digit touchdown floor with luck as the quarterback there. Yeah. And now it's like, eh, I don't know. I, I don't know if we're going to get a lot of consistency with him. So he's probably not someone I'm looking to target. Yeah. I mean, uh, the issue is we, if you look at his game script from 2018 and you, you commented on this somewhere, uh, he was much better when they were leading. Yeah, how, I mean, how much, I mean, maybe, maybe Brissett has learned a ton over the past couple of years since he hasn't played regularly and he's learned from luck in the, uh, in the film room on the field, on the sidelines, but that's a lot of what ifs for my potential luck, RB too. I mean, that's the thing. It's not like Jacoby Brissett's trash or anything. And it's not like I'm avoiding situation because it's Brissett. He's just as good as, as you know, if you're, if you're running back was running with like Joe Mixon is running with Dalton. And, I mean, I, I'm not someone who thinks Dalton's horrible as a quarterback. I think he's been a respectable NFL quarterback for the most part um, with a lot of bad luck around him injury-wise and stuff. But, like, if it, you know, he's, it's not someone that I'm looking to target because he has that quarterback. But it's also I'm not fading based on Jacoby Brissett. So, um, we have Mac probably like fifth, sixth round for me. So, you brought up Lamar Miller toward the ACL. Duke Johnson's ADP is going to rise up the draft boards, of course. I actually just dumped off Lamar Miller in a dynasty league like three days ago, right before that happened for like a future second and a future fourth. So I'm feeling really good about that. Uh, I, I think this probably turns into a running back by committee now in Houston. I know Duke, Duke will probably play a very large role there. Um, and I think Crockett will probably play a role on the goal line. And they have uh, Karan Higdon, who I absolutely think is, I think he's a terrible running back and uh, there's no shot that I'm even looking at him. But um, now that he's hurt, they might potentially just use a three, I don't want to say a three-headed monster because that is not what they have going on there in that Houston backfield, but a three-headed committee, yeah. I guess you could say. I mean, so, I could see T.J. Eldon maybe going there. I could see McCoy going there. I could see uh, Carlos Hyde getting cut or traded, however they're going to do it. He's been traded like two or three times, I feel like, already. Yeah. Um, they're definitely going to get somebody else. I just – we don't know who it is. Yeah, so we'll have to wait on that. It, it yeah. sucks if it's like it should uh, – potentially be or hypothetically be like such a good situation you know the running back behind Deshaun Watson um and now it's it's kind of messy but if I if I'm going one way I'm definitely going to be looking for Duke um now wh where did Duke go in our draft we drafted before the Lamar <laughs> the guy um uh, who was at the 12 pick he took with the turn he took Andrew Luck and Marlon Mack in the third and fourth round and then in the eighth round he took Lamar Miller and this was before we saw any of the games Ooh. so Three of his top eight picks shot right out of the gate. Yo. It was it was actually kind of hilarious. You know? But now I feel bad. Um, so here here's a hypothetical. Who would you rather have, Marlon Mack or um, Tevin Coleman? Great question. Um, I'm. I, I think I'd actually take Mack there. Yeah, I mean it's close. I love Brita. And, and, and when you watch the tape, you'll see Brita catches that beautiful pass 
over the shoulder. Uh, it was a little underthrown, but from Jimmy G in, in, in the touchdown. It, it was a touchdown. Oh, I didn't um, and you see, uh, like, how ridiculously dynamic Breida is. If he didn't play through stupid injuries last year, he would have had an even better season because he was, like, banged up half the games he played in. Mm -hmm. uh, he could easily average five yards a carry, and I would not be surprised because he's, he's done it. Um, and then another thing you'll, you'll notice uh, that's a little concerning is that Deshaun Watson was running for his life with the starting O-line yeah. last night. That's, That's gonna, concerning. That's the story uh, of his career so far. Yeah, I mean, is he going to end up like luck with another set of massive injuries because he doesn't have a line to hold him up? I hope not. I just he was my quarterback one in that in that draft. I love I, him, but I just I'm afraid <laughs> I'm afraid for him. I know, dude. I stacked. I got uh, Deshaun Watson at like the two. I had the I had the one hundred three. So on the second, and it was at the two ten. I took Watson, and then I grabbed. Will Fuller in like the eighth round, I think, and then Kiki QT in, in like the fourteenth. So I actually have three of those Texans players and hoping this offense can put it together. I think I think they're still in for a good situation. Watson will figure it out with the offensive line and everything. There's a lot of injury risk on that team, but man, if they don't they stay oh. healthy, it yeah. can be scary. Yeah, yeah. I mean the rest of the team is Brandon Cooks, Tyler Lockett. Like so I got but my pass catchers have a good floor. So I'm not really like relying on, you know, um Will Fuller to come in and, and win the league for me. But you know, if he can if he can also be part of the, you know, exception and not the rule, then yeah. we'll have a huge fucking monster season from Watson and Fuller probably. Now Oh yeah. That'll be a beautiful bet uh stack uh in DFS uh when that time comes and when 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 the game script is right. Oh, man, I can't wait for the damn season to start. We're so close. All we're right. Close. All right. We're, we're about 10, what, 10, 12 days out? Something, something like, that. like that. Yeah, 10, 12 days out. Let's fucking go. All right, Doc, thank you again for uh, coming back onto the channel and joining us. Let the people know where they could find any more of your information, um, where to follow you. Obviously, go follow him on Twitter. His handle will be linked down below. Um, so, yeah, let him know. So, um, if you're not following me for tw for injuries, what are you doing? <laughs> Facts. Um, that next thing is if you want to get inside my head in terms of drafting, so you basically have about 10 days, I just made it uh, $5 for the rest of the preseason for my entire script, my, all my rankings, uh, every video, everything's available. And after that, it's gonna, it'll be back to normal and I'm going to cancel that uh, available membership. Um, the Fantasy Doctors has a ton of videos. Uh, Where can they find that, your, your draft script? The draft script is uh, on uh, our, our uh, Patreon page, uh, patreon.com uh, slash the, uh, the fantasy doctors. Okay. Um, the, our YouTube channel is pretty easy to find. Just YouTube it. Um, if you, if there's an injury that is a big name guy or, or offensive guy, we've covered it in video form in some capacity. And then there's a bunch of other stuff on there. So uh, we, we try to do as much as we can. Uh, the season is, has been crazy. Um, and, and we're rocking and rolling. Uh, but uh Thanks for having me on, and uh, we'll, we'll do this again soon. Yep, every week throughout the season, we'll have to figure out a day we want to film and a day we want to release. I was thinking probably later in the weeks. Um, yeah, it's usually like a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday type of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely later in the week. So we have some more information, but that's all we got for today. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new, and we will see y'all on tomorrow's video. So thanks for uh, hanging out today. Thanks. Hey!